Okay. Oh yeah. Two o'clock in the afternoon, somewhere in Moab. Middle of the day. Pretty wild conditions. Now, uh, some sissies out there can't fly during the day because they're scared. Actually, it's because they don't know how to fly. Uh, which is why they're scared, because people are scared of what they don't know. But for properly trained people that know what the heck they're doing, it is a total on issue. Let's go flying! And since we're flying dominators, it adds yet another level. You know, as master level pilots, yeah, I could fly a totally uncertified class glider. But since I get more performance from a dominator, why? It would make no sense to fly a total death trap if I can get more performance from the safest class of glider. So there's literally no reason not to fly the safest class of glider. This is the way it goes. We're going to launch uphill. And just a touch of wind here. I'm going to fly an extra small. Trevor's going to fly 2X. And it's more about I'm flying a size bigger because of the difference in weight. That way we're closer in speeds. So we both end up about the same speed. Super Trevor! Uphill! Both ways! And five feet of snow! And look at the wing. He's in sync. Climbing. It's a little trashy. That's what you would expect during the middle of the day. On issue for supers. Check, make sure the pins are in. Always double check your reserve. It's really not that big of a deal. People get all freaked out about flying midday only because they don't know anything about the sport. I mean, think about it. Paragliding, paragliders were specifically designed to be flown in the middle of the day off of the mountains in active thermic conditions. That's what a glider, paraglider, is designed for. That's what it's made for. So for people to suggest you can't fly during the day, oh my gosh, you might get hit by a bump. <laughs> uh, that's when you say, thank you, but have a nice day. I think I'm gonna go train with someone that does know what a paraglider is and what it's for. Ooh yeah, hockey dokey. So, trim is back up to catch up to Super Trevor. After checking my camera, and as soon as I catch back up, then I'll go trims back down just so we're about the same speed. Trims up, trims down. Dominator's so stable, I don't really care too much at this altitude. <laughs> Big old thermal kicking off of that hill. Got me a little lift as I was kicking around there. <laughs> oh yeah. This thing looks like a Sphinx or something. I bet if you give it a good old swift kick and all the dust falls off, it probably is a Sphinx. to explore than with a pair of motor. 
or more specifically, a flat top paramotor and a dominator, which is the safest on the planet. Obviously, we wouldn't fly a piece of crap during the day, let alone any day. I may have been born during the day, but not yesterday. <laughs> So you don't see most of those guys out there. Shoot, they're scared to death flying during the day. That's because they don't understand how to fly. They don't know what a glider's for. They never had any proper training. They don't have the skills. You might think because they're flying around, oh, they've been flying for years. They know what they're doing. That doesn't mean they know what they're doing. You got to look at their actual skill level. <laughs> and yeah, we're too lazy to put radios on. What can I say? And five bucks this is going to turn right and go right around this thing, right through the rotor. So watch closely his wing as he flies right through the rotor with a dominator. Got a little pressure on his wing, a little pressure on the brakes. Both of us flying right through the rotor. Notice we are on the downwind side of that hill. And whoop de do de do It's the Dominator. We don't give a crap. Yes, I know exactly where the rotor is and what it is and how it's caused, but I'm not worried about it because I'm flying the Dominator. And I got super skills. Diving around. There's just nothing cooler. Exploring some big, huge rock in the middle of nowhere. Oh, look at that. That's a uh, that's a lightning rod is what's up there. I thought it was a flag or something. Whoa. Check this thing out. Seriously, you just had paws up front here. This would totally be a sphinx. I've always wanted to fly here. Right through the rotor in the middle of the day in 100 degree temperatures. Okay, 90. There we go. You see him get hit with turbulence from the rotor. And no worries. You just keep the glider loaded. If you can kite up a pole and stand on top with one foot, the odds of you taking a collapse are extremely low, and even if you do, you know how to recover it instantly, and even if you don't, it's a dominator. And you can see how slow we're going into the wind now, so there's quite a bit of wind. And so we flew right through the rotor there blatantly, but no worries. This is seriously cool. I want to go check out that cave in the rotor here. Let's go hang out in the rotor and check out the caves. Maybe he'll follow me. Ooh, la 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 yeah. So what in the world is that? It's like somebody's caved in. It's like a cave going in the backside of this thing. Now I don't mind flying in the rotor, but I don't exactly want to fly one foot off the ground. Oh, it doesn't look like it goes in very far. Just looks like there's a hole there. And it just kind of goes in about 10, 15 feet. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Probably can't because it's so wide angle. All righty. Let's just 
just the coolest thing ever. Now I'm in some serious sync. If you notice I'm going down there, full throttle. But fear not, sink does not go through the ground. Sinking air will only go to the ground and then it'll go horizontal. So wind does not blow through an object. So like if wind is blowing you towards a mountain, it's not gonna blow you through the mountain. It's gonna blow you towards the mountain and then the air is gonna go up and over the mountain. So you don't have to be worried that sinking air is gonna take you all the way to the ground. It might take you to the ground, but then it goes horizontal. Just a tip for the day. Lots of little things like that to know. It's all in the ground school from Super Training, but nowhere else. Super Training is a completely original ground school from massive experience in the sport. Pretty much everybody else is just a load of BS trying to pretend like they're teaching you something and so they just cookie cutter all kinds of weird BS stuff in there that is a waste of your time. But Super Training, we went through all of it and I deleted all of the garbage that is just wasting your time and just put in all the pieces of critical information that you do need to know about the sport. You just got nailed with some turbulence. You saw the wing kind of flip around there. I got a little piece of that. This is too cool. It was just so bizarre. Little rocks out in the middle of nowhere. Getting some funky air here. No problemo. Oh yeah, look at that. There's like a bowl. That fills with water. Be a nice hot tub. Look at that. is a perfect swimming pool. All these little objects out in the middle of nowhere. We're just sitting there. That was just too slick. Woo, getting a thermal off of that one. Sore in this one. Got some ridge sore going on. So a thermal is the hot air rising, which is lifting air. And then you got ridge soaring, which is wind going up and over the top of an object. So this is a ridge, and as the wind comes up and over this, that again is also lifting air, so if I soar right along the front of this, I should get some lifting air. A little bit, not too much. But you can see as soon as I fly past it, boom, I start to sink. The wind is coming from this way, so if we can find a nice long ridge, we should be able to completely soar. It is pretty fun to just kind of find a lifting surface and just hang out and soar a ridge in a spot that probably no paraglider's ever flown before. It's just too difficult to get there. But this looks pretty cool right here. Get 
these goof nuts saying you can't fly during the day? Hello. Oh, you're crazy. You're going to die because you went through a bump. What the freak do you think a paraglider was designed to do? Paraglide thermals. That's what it's for. Oh, there's some lift. Feeling it. Let's see if we can't get a piece of that. Go. Got a bit of a thermal here. Oh, fell off the outside of it here. Oh, it's like Trevor's got one. There's some lift right there. Oh, I got me some lift. There it is. Got me a piece. Boo, yeah. There it is. It's kind of lifting now. Feels like the wind kind of switched directions here. I mean, if you get wind going this way, you're going to get lift here, guaranteed. Just a matter of getting the right amount of wind coming straight over this hill. There we go. Okay, I am officially soaring for a minute. so I'm definitely going downwind. Bit of a thermal right there. Yep. Got me a piece. Yep. Got me some lift. So I weight shift hard to the left and use a little right brake, interestingly enough. That helps the glider stay flatter so you can stay in the lift and be more efficient as you circle. So I weight shift hard left and then hold more right brake. Woo, that got me some thermal right there. I'm staying up. Trevor's landing. Doing a touch and go. I'm still up. I'm flying. Okay, now I'm sinking. No more thermal. <laughs> you see me get out of it and bam! Dropping like a rock. Kind of landing in a pass here. It's a little bit funky. You can see Trevor getting knocked around a little bit there. Booyah. Oh yeah, Super Trevor. Bring her in. And slide her in. Ooh 
Weight shift. <laughs> Bam. Booyah. Woo we doggies. Ooh, raw. Alright. Baller up here. Dominator, baby. And remember, when I'm soaring, I'm doing it on an extra small. Super Trevor was soaring on an extra, extra small. These Dominators are incredibly efficient. So you're, of course, loaded up with a smaller glider with the weight of a motor. You know, so by the time I add the motor and gas and reserve and everything, I probably weigh about 250, something like that. So you got 250 pounds on an extra small. So that's one efficient extra small to be able to soar. Too freaking cool. Let's go do it again. Okay. Let's go flying. Food first, then again. Boo yeah, we was tearing it up, baby. I barely burned any gas. Yeah, we were getting some lift. Uh, that hill has some lift, man. Yeah. I literally just had a guy call me. And uh, we're about he's, to get approached. he went to his local training place. Yeah? And he's, he talked to them, and they're like, oh, no, you can't fly during the day. You can only fly early in the mornings, and only if it's, like, perfectly calm or really light winds. And the guy's like, screw that. I'm not getting into this sport. Yeah. He's like, that can't be right. I see Super Dell and his kids flying in the middle of the day through the mountains. So he calls me up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, why do people think they can't fly during the day when a paraglider is specifically made for it. to be flown? I mean, what the heck is a paraglider pilot? That's when you fly is during the If you don't fly during the day, you can't paraglide because you don't have the thermic activity. So a paraglider is specifically designed. And I mean, how what, how bad was it? It's like nearly 100 degrees, probably 90 degrees in the desert ah. near Moab. Ah. But it really wasn't that big of a deal. We had a little boop, 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 a couple little bumps. I mean, it was nothing uh, we couldn't handle. You just fly the glider, yeah. just like you're at home. I mean, we didn't even take any wingtip collapses. It was like nothing. Nothing. And that's pretty typical. Usually it's not that big of a deal, but you should be prepared with proper skills and proper gear. I mean, we're flying the safest class of glider. And of course we have mastery level skills. So we're prepared for gnarly psycho conditions. We did fly. What do you think about flying to the rotor of the mountain? I knew you were new. Yeah. Cause we were flying circles. We knew the wind was going from that way. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. And it was just like, boom, boom. You just bump through it. The Whoop, worst I felt it was at the top on the backside. Yeah. As you would. You're, You're getting a little bit of rotor because of it going that way. But, but even was, still, it's a dominator. It wasn't a big deal in the slightest. We just flew right through it. whoop de doo Yeah. No problemo. That's what it is. So we're not saying that you come straight home from super training and go fly in 100 degree temperatures in Arizona. You know, you work into it, but yes, you can absolutely fly during the day in 100 degree temperatures in the desert. It, you can. Now, in Phoenix, in the middle of the day, that might be a little gnarly, you know, if it's 120. But the, uh, again, it is, it is what it is. If you have the right skills and gear, you can pretty much fly whenever the heck you want. Anything but horribly bad weather. That was nothing. This is whoop to do. nothing. Let's go eating. That was awesome though, man. You just pull off on a little turnout in the side of the road and go explore things that I bet nobody's ever explored that from that angle before. Got a helicopter, not possible. That was cool. I, well, the helicopter's not going to fly around like but, see, five feet away from way. it. Yeah, we got to go check that out next. Let's go eat and then maybe hit it again up in Moab. Then go home. Yeah. Have that was eat. just cool. All right, let's do it.